In the last video, we looked at how to defend against a pawn trying to become a queen. So now let's take a look at the offense and see what exactly do we do if we get into a key square or a critical square? How do we finish the job? Remember that we said the critical squares are two ranks higher than the pawn if it's from the first to the fourth rank. And it's both one and two ranks higher starting at the fifth rank. So in this scenario, we see the critical squares for this pawn on d2 is c4, d4, and e4. Our king needs to get to one of those squares in order to get a queen. In our last video, we saw that the king couldn't get to the squares. We saw how to defend, how to successfully stop that pawn from becoming a queen. So now what happens if we do get into those squares? White to move and white makes a jump for it. And black is going to make his best try. But white gets in the critical square. And remember, all you need to do is get into one critical square. It doesn't matter which one. And it doesn't matter whose turn it is. If you're in a critical square as offense, and it's not your turn or it is your turn, it doesn't matter. It's still winning. So what's black going to do? Black's going to put up a good fight. Black takes the opposition. You see this? Black is now opposing the white king. White can no longer advance. And white definitely doesn't want to retreat. So maybe white sidesteps right here. And black does the same thing. Takes the opposition again. So what do you do if you're white? How do you get that pawn to the queening square? Yes, we're on a critical square, but what do we do? We can go back, and then black's going to go back and oppose us once again. So here the white king is really a little bit iffy. Does he push his pawn? He certainly doesn't want to step backwards because if the white king goes back, then black is going to jump right in and block off the critical squares. So white tries to imagine, what would it be like if I pushed my pawn right here? Okay, here we go. Now, if I were to push my pawn, then the critical squares would go up. Ooh, and my king isn't even in a key square anymore. I don't like that. But even worse, if I push my pawn up too, then the critical squares go up too. And now, black is in the critical squares. <laughs> so white is a little bit worried about pushing his pawn because right now, he is in the critical squares. And the moment that pawn goes up, those critical squares change. And in this case, if white pushes that pawn... He won't be in the critical squares anymore. Is this good or bad? Well, look, black has the opposition right now. You see, black is opposing the white king. Watch what happens if white pushes a pawn. It's completely safe to push a pawn here, but push it only one square. Watch what happens. Did you see that? Let's try it again. Watch carefully. Look at the arrow between the kings. Now white has the opposition. White pushed the pawn forward. Yes, he's no longer in the critical squares, but because white has the opposition now against the black king, because it's black to move, black has to retreat. He has to sidestep from these squares, and white's going to get in. Watch how white does this. Black will move to the side. He's, again, he's going to do his best. White once again takes the opposition. And See this? All the critical squares are now blocked by the white king. The black king cannot get into any of them. And the white king is going to get into one. If black moves to e6, then the white king can jump to c5. Or if the black king moves to c6, the white king can move to e5. In this case, e6. And there you go. The white king just jumped right back in the critical squares. And everything is good again. Did you see how that worked? Now had... The white king pushed his pawn two, it would have been a draw. That would have been a terrible mistake. But pushing your pawn one is completely okay if it gives you the opposition against the black king. So here black is going to go back along the queening square just like he should. And white once again takes the opposition. White opposes the black king. And black moves to the side. And here, don't be in such a rush to push your pawn. Don't just push your pawn right now. If you push your pawn, it's going to be a stalemate. Black will regain the opposition, and then you're stuck. In this
this variation, what will happen if white pushes his pawn to d4 instead of the better move, moving his king to c6? And here, white pushes his pawn. This is a horrible blunder. He just threw the game away. Wait, wait, I didn't mean it. I take that move back. I take that move back. Ah! Oh no, there's no taking moves back. Now, let's see why this was a mistake. We pushed our pawn up to the fourth rank when we should have moved our king. Now the critical squares go up. White is no longer on the critical squares, and black takes the opposition against white. And now look at this. How is white going to advance that pawn? White is now being opposed by the black king, and the pawn is now all the way up as far as it can go. White may try to get around the king. Black king just continues with the opposition. White pushes the pawn. Black king blocks. White may push the pawn again, and now you can see the critical squares at these, after these pawn pushes are all the way at the 7th and 8th rank. The white king isn't even close. White can advance his king. Black takes the opposition. White pushes his pawn with check. And we know that when you push a pawn to the 7th rank with check, it's usually a stalemate. Black king now just goes to the queening square. And now there's only one move white has to protect this pawn. White goes here to d6, stalemate. All because of one terrible mistake, pushing a pawn when he should have moved the king. Well, as we saw in the variation, pushing the pawn here is a blunder. It moves the critical squares off of our king and then allows black to oppose us. Instead, we need to move our king forward. Now we can push our pawn because our king will be in a critical square when the pawn goes to d4. Black takes the opposition, but that's quite okay. White pushes the pawn, and now white has the opposition. And the critical squares go up when the pawn goes up. Black moves back, trying to guard the queening square. White can push the pawn again because the the white king is still in the critical squares. Remember, the pawn in the fifth rank, the critical squares are one and two ranks higher. So as long as you're in the critical squares, you can push that pawn however much you want. So white just pushed it a second time. He's still in the critical squares. Black goes to the queening square. And here, very important move, white takes the opposition. Not pushing the pawn, opposing the black king, forcing the black king out of the queening square. Black king leaves the queening square, and now white guards the queening square with his king. And you can see what's going to happen. The pawn has a free path all the way to becoming a queen, and white wins the game. Can you see how important it is to know critical squares? I recommend that you memorize them, just like you would memorize the rules of chess. If you commit to memory the key squares for promoting a pawn, I promise you will be a better player.